All right, happy holidays, everybody. We're getting ready to close out 2022, which I would say was one of the more successful years in my life. Actually, um, all of the last three years were really good. 20, 21, 22. It was actually 2019. That was kind of my lost year. I'll get to that in a moment. But we began the year 2022 with me having good control of my eating habits, with me having... Um, some control over my social anxiety. I used to have a big problem with going to loud, crowded environments. But unfortunately, I wasn't being accepted for who I was. I was working two jobs at the time, at a university, at a tutoring center. And because of differences in lifestyle and demographics, I wasn't really getting accepted for who I was. I also had an addiction to masturbating, in large part to escape the problems I was having at work. And I was addicted to masturbating. I was doing it three, four, five times a day. And it made it hard to solve all the other problems in my life. I needed to speak up for myself at work, but I also wanted to go out to my car to masturbate instead of dealing with the problem. I needed to uh, go to a holiday party, but I'd be there and then I want to hide out in my car or the bathroom to masturbate. And it was, it was kind of... Um, intrusive on my career, just like the eating disorder had been two years earlier. And so my New Year's resolution in 2022 was to quit masturbating altogether. And I remember New Year's night just um, thinking about how next New Year's, next Christmas, I could be free of that and have, a, have new um, connections with people and actually negotiate tricky situations at work. I was fantasizing about that. And so... Um, I, uh, I was so excited about that thought that I went three, four days the first time around, around the new year. That was a record for me at the time, if you can believe it. And it felt really good because if you can do something for two days, you can convince yourself you can do it the rest of your life, right? Uh, but um, it gave me a nice taste of what it was like. And um, unfortunately, I was working at a tutoring center. My boss was... Um, of a different religion. They really crucify people who are LGBTQ. I hate to say it here because he might be watching the video, but he comes from a world that crucifies, literally executes people who are LGBTQ. So you can imagine how he feels about me. And so during the whole time, I kind of felt pushed aside, right? I mean, he lives, he lives in the United States now, so he kind of has to pretend to accept me for who I am. But in the back of my mind, uh, I'm just a, a, a number or a slave or something like that. So I was getting all these awkward hours. I was constantly having to uh, take all the hours nobody wants. And um, if anything, the, the students liked me a whole lot better than the boss. Um, I, I still get along with one of my colleagues and um, he tells me that the students ask about me a lot more so than my boss. And my boss wasn't shy about saying that, you know, the two of us had conflicts. But anyway, at the time, my mom also was having a hard time adjusting to the idea that I wasn't uh, going to settle down, get married, and have kids. I, I had a girlfriend going into the pandemic, and after we, the pandemic hit, I really discovered how much I love my single life. Uh, which is why I say 2019 was the, 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 my real lost year when I was adjusting to the idea that I might get married and give up my single life. I'm so glad it didn't play out that way, but it caused a lot of drama for me at the time. So here we are in the spring of 2022. My mom wasn't accepting me for who I was. My boss wasn't accepting me for who I was. I was watching the news about the situation in Belarus. They had some human rights violations and um, they were talking of the idea of hunger striking came up. And it hit me, what if I hunger striked? And I started losing 5, 10, 15 pounds and got everybody concerned. Then maybe as I regained my weight and my health, I could negotiate a little bit better. That, that was my thought process. And uh, so I started hunger striking. I was eating eight, 900 calories a day for uh, several weeks. And uh, I lost 5, 10 pounds. And I got my mom really concerned. And I told my mom I wasn't afraid of death, if, if that's, that was the means to the end. And so, 
I told my boss that I was having a little bit of stress and it was causing me to lose weight. Didn't tell him about the hunger strike. But I was hoping that the weight loss would be dramatic enough that, oh my god, Andrew was really stressed out. Why, why don't we work with him? It didn't really turn out though. Uh, although the students were a little bit more accommodating. I got to know some of the students' uh, parents. Uh, I really miss them. I really do. I just, uh, I, I, my boss, I think he was in his 60s, 70s. I, I, I remember daydreaming that something would happen to him to cause him to have to retire. And, uh, and not a bad thing necessarily. Maybe that he would hit it big with something or uh, family matters or maybe just wanting to retire. He would sell the center to somebody else. I could work with those students, especially sell it to somebody who is a little bit more open-minded, right? A uh, local over in Seattle, not, 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 not a foreigner, right? Unfortunately, a lot of the owners are foreigners. And, or maybe sell it to somebody from a, a more uh, progressive country, right? Uh, I, I remember sitting in the tutoring center just daydreaming that over and over and over because I really love the students and the parents and they even think about me still even a year later. Then I went on to uh, another tutoring center in, uh, in Seattle. Now at the second center I had a boss who was Korean and I felt awkward too because now I was getting the favoritism because I was the only Asian working there. I had a co-worker who was uh, your typical American girl. Think Carrie Underwood kind of girl, right? I had another co-worker who was uh, uh, somewhat older than me. Uh, uh, I, I want to say Eastern European, maybe Russian or, or, or Polish. And so, so I was getting the favoritism now. I, I, I really despised it because I didn't want my coworkers to feel the way I felt when I was at the first center, so I tried to get along with the rest of my coworkers. Now, my first day at the job, I almost had a heart attack because one of my coworkers, the, the the Carrie Underwood coworker, was talking to me, and she got really excited. And I thought, oh no, because I had another coworker in the past who had some interest in me, and I was upset that I didn't reciprocate and caused all sorts of problems. And as we're talking. She mentions what her husband does for a living. And when I, when I heard the word husband, I breathed a huge sigh of relief because at least she wouldn't be chasing after me. And so that was our first day and um, it was good. I, I had only minor problems. The only complaint I had at that second tutoring center was that um, the, the desks were very crammed. There was not a whole lot of space to maneuver and I had to stand to write on the board and it was causing posture issues. And so, um, I one day I was asking one of the students if he would mind sitting, because there's enough room. He could have sat one row back, and um, he gave me a, a small attitude. He just, I, I want to sit here. He didn't say any. If he had even said anything like he, you know, he has vision issues or something like that, I could have accepted it. But he was just really whiny about wanting to sit where he wanted to sit. And I, I so badly wanted to tell him how badly I hurt, but I didn't, and it just, I was upset. But that was a very minor issue compared to, it's just odd, you got a 16 year old who's studying the SAT and he's whiny about a seat. And it, it was just odd, if anything. It gave me a bad impression of him. Uh, but on the other hand, he was getting a 700 at 750, and that toward the end, I think he got a 780 on the SAT, SAT math. So it was just awkward. I guess you can only have it one way, right? Uh, some people are book smart and not very street smart and vice versa, right? And um, uh, I don't know why I, got, I, I was so upset about the posture issue. Now looking back, I, I, I really needed to get some exercise anyway. But then um, the whole summer I was daydreaming about Phoenix because I really didn't have a whole lot of vacation time. And so uh, one day just... Um, out of curiosity. I wasn't even thinking about getting the job. I just applied for the job at Phoenix because I wanted to daydream about moving here. I was totally expecting to get, you know, you're typical, you know, you're so far away. Why would you look for a job in Phoenix? But something clicked. I don't get along with uh, my direct report, but the owner of the uh, center that I'm working at, um, 
I think she has some odd feelings about me, and so I'm getting a little favoritism again. Unfortunately, unfortunately in the United States, everything runs on favoritism, it seems. Like you just have to learn to um, take the benefit, but um, don't allow it to get out of hand, right? It's so weird. I really despise it. You know, the other day as I was making those bismuth crystals, I was thinking to myself, if I hit it big with bismuth, right, with the bismuth art, if I start making six figures a year with bismuth art, I'll still keep my tutoring job, but I'll um, probably relax some things and maybe correct some political incorrectness at the at the workplace, you know, and um, I don't know. If I didn't have to worry about risking losing the job, there are a lot of things I could speak up for myself about, I think. I was just daydreaming about that. I wouldn't quit my job. See, it drives me crazy. Every time I watch a game show and the host asks the contestant, what would you do if you won $2 million? A lot of times the answer is quit my job. No, it would enhance my job. And uh, I, I so much want to go to a, t uh, a game show just to say that on the air. And so think about it this way, right? You're sitting at home, you're watching your employee on a game show. The host goes, what would you do with a million dollars? I would use it to enhance my situation so I could do a better job at work. And then you see your other employee also on the show, oh, I would quit my job. Like, wouldn't you, wouldn't you just wish that that second employee would just quit their job right now so that you don't have to fire them and, and pay their unemployment, right? That's how I would feel if I saw my employees on a game show, right? But um, I was watching um, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire a few years ago, and so you got this contestant who, who swears he's gonna quit his job if he wins a million dollars, and then he has the audacity to call his boss on a question. And I, I remember just thinking, oh my God, I can't imagine what it's like when he goes back to work. This is really silly. But anyway, um, I was just randomly applying to jobs in Phoenix just because I was daydreaming and I got the job and I moved here and so unfortunately I've had a little bit of a relapse with my eating disorders and the problem was um, the geography and the scheduling of things. I used to eat once a day, usually beginning 4, 5, 6 p.m. I really can't do that. The tutoring center where I'm working right now, I often get a shift that goes like 1 to 9. I'm not hungry at one, and at first I put up with eating at one to force myself to eat at one, but I realized that I was kind of distorting my body signals by doing that, and I quickly realized, oh my god, this is not going to work too well, and I decided to bring my food to the tutoring center, even though we're really not supposed to eat in front of the students, there's not a whole lot of time. My I was talking to one of my coworkers, and he told me, well, you got like five minutes in between students, just cram whatever you can. Yeah, it doesn't go so well if you're a recovering binge eater. And so I decided to eat in front of the students. Now, I got a little bit of a problem, though. When I eat in front of the students, I got to learn how to do this because food tastes like cardboard if you try to talk and eat and try to sneak food when you get 15 seconds. It really does. If anybody has any suggestions on how to do that, feel free to leave a comment. Even my coworkers were a little bit... Uh, uh, not experienced with that, let's say. But my coworkers and perhaps my boss, he doesn't say it out loud because it's the rules, but my, my boss, uh, my coworkers were very understanding. I had a coworker who had been working there 20 years and she said, you know, take care of yourself first. The good work comes from you being good. And that gave me a nice warm fuzzy feeling. I bet my boss probably thinks that way too. He can't say it because of policy issues, right? But uh, it, 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 that, that's good. And um, that takes us into the fall season. And um, unfortunately, I, I haven't had good luck with the no fab. And I know why I haven't had so good luck. I've been, um, just the other day, I think it was uh, Thursday, I had a student who uh, I felt really good working with. She's a 12 year old and struggling in math. and. She looked at the chapter that we were working on. Oh, can we skip this chapter and do this one? And um, it's Christmas time. I said, okay, but we got to come back to it. On the, uh, I gave her 15 minutes. I said, we'll come back to it in 15 minutes. How does that sound? She was like, okay. And she's very agreeable, which is nice. This is where I say she has the street smarts, but not the book smarts, right? The student I had in Seattle was the other way around, right? And I come back to the chapter with her, and um, I got her to understand it. And 
And I said, well, next time, because they, they got a, uh, a, a few things they have to do before they take this test for each section. I, and I was like, wow, next time you get to take uh, your test. And uh, she thanked me and wished me a happy holiday. And it was all good. And I just got a nice, warm, fuzzy feeling. Like I had uh, just, just a good... See, I'm an auto-romantic. I feel romance toward myself. You know, when a husband and a wife complete a job together, right, they, they might feel romance. Right? If my parents, they're working on home renovations right now, if they do something with their home and they feel good, they feel romance, right? I feel that way too. And so I went back to back home and I did, you know what, right? And unfortunately, well, I felt good doing it. In the past, it was I was masturbating to escape, right? In the past, I was kind of raping myself, right? Nowadays, I fall in love with myself, right? Let's put it that way, right? So, a different kind of fat. But at the same time, I need to make sure it doesn't go out of control and make sure that I continue to be creative even if I'm fapping, right? So, for example, during the three months that I was off of fapping, I had a three-month streak at one point, actually. I had um, discovered new hobbies, wrote some new games, made a new friend. Now, speaking of making connections, I had a problem. I had met a Ukrainian refugee, and unfortunately, I have a big problem with making friends. All, all my friends eventually want romance, and that's not what I'm shooting for. Actually, I think um, the Ukrainian refugee I met, she also wants my U.S. citizenship. That part I don't mind, but the romance, I just wanted a friend. And so, um, unfortunately, I did, uh, that's been a tough one for me. That's probably one of my goals for the next year, 2023, is to make a lifetime partner without the romance. Anyway, Happy New Year, and um, I'm so glad that uh, Peter Schiff released another Peter Shit Show uh, for Christmas. That was a nice Christmas present to go online and see another Peter Shit Show. Uh, have a fucking great new year. Make sure to speak up for yourself. And even if you don't get a... See, what I should have done at the tutoring center I was at, where my boss was anti-gayness, um, what I should have done was gone to work and bragged about what I did all weekend and bragged about my love life to myself and kind of, um, c kind of mentally... Uh, 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 spam him, right? That's what I'm doing these days, and it's kind of already starting to make a dent, right? Just have a good time and, and let everybody know you're having a fucking, a fucking good time, right? Anyway, Happy New Year, and fuck prejudice, single lives matter.